This is the second of three Memorex ATSC to NTSC converter boxes so you can use an old analog TV with the modern digital off-air signals. And unlike the first one, this one here won't, won't power up. In fact, it won't even go into standby. Just the red standby light blinks off and on and it will not turn on. So this one's also going to be a power supply problem. It's going to be a capacitor. It's not one of the output filters. This one's going to be on the primary side. Let's take a look at this one. This one I plug it in and you notice this one here. This one definitely has a power supply problem. It's flashing red. It won't turn on. So this one definitely has a power supply problem. The third one doesn't even do anything. So I figure, what the heck, while I'm on a roll, let's see what's wrong with the other two. Maybe I can get them going too. So say these things, well, I got three of them and all three of them are shot. So that gives you an idea of how reliable these little converter boxes are or, or were. And, and I have a, a fourth one was an Apex and it doesn't work. These were terrible, terrible electronics. Nothing like the old, the old you know TV that lasts 40 years. Not these things. I think these things were produced and sold at a price. Well, most of them in the states were government subsidized. That they uh, produced just to get people going during the tr the direct TV or the digital TV, not direct TV, digital TV transition. And uh, they were made as cheaply as they possibly could make them. So as you can see, this one's had its filters replaced on it too. These three were replaced on this one. And we'll take a look at the power supply on this bad boy. And see whether the filters have gone bad again on this. That screw was also loose. Now I can assure you that when I put it together, I didn't leave the screw loose. I tightened it down. Let's take a look at this power supply. This one's pulsing off and on. So it might be a cap that's bad on here. It might be even one of the ones on the, the primary side, just because the symptom of this is a little different than the other ones. And these caps don't look like they've um, they bulged or anything. Check that connection on this on this coil. Get a closer look at that one. Well, here's that coil. If I wiggle it, you'll see that it is actually bad too. Look. I would say that's going bad on this one. I'm going to redo those and I'm going to check the caps again and some of the ones over on the uh, primary side. See whether there's uh, any problem with them, but this looks like a, an ongoing issue with these things. Looks like they got the same type of problems. But this, this one here is uh, definitely, this connection here is definitely bad on that inductor. These set-top boxes are pretty much a universal design. It's, it, I think it's probably an FPGA type, the way it has to boot up and load the uh, program when it loads. So it could be anything, not only this. And the other inductor is over here. But it could also, for example, be a satellite receiver. It could do anything because it's essentially software defined. And uh, the power supplies on these, they are just off the shelf that the vendor just bought and plugged in. Do the diodes as well. We know this because there are outputs on this that don't go anywhere. There's you know outputs from the power supply on that header cable that would have been for different devices that aren't even being used and the board's not even fully populated so this is a, just a standard third-party power supply that they bought, put on this little board for this project to get these things produced as absolutely cheap as possible because in a sense they were literally giving the things away back when the, the transition was taking place back in, I think it was 2007.
The one little cap that I suspect might be causing a problem is this little one down here. It's a small, what is it, about a 1 microfarad, probably 250 volts, or is it, no, 22 at 35. Some of them use a real small one that is used as a kicker. And of course, this bloody crappy glue that they've got all over the board. But let me just check this one here. This is in the primary side, and uh, the fact that this thing's pulsing on and off indicates that the, the oscillator's starting and stopping. And that could be something in the primary side that's causing that, as opposed to a capacitor in the secondary side. So let's just uh, get the ESR tester, and we'll, uh, we'll see what this one looks like. So this is this little one right here. Mm. 29, 30 ohms, and it's a 22 at 35 volts. So 22 at 35 volts should be like 1.5. Mm. I think that's the one that's bad. What do you guys think? Let's change it. Let's change it and see whether that fixes this one. That's good because this is a different problem than we normally run on. Usually it's the filters on the secondary side. As I say, I've changed them on these ones. These have all been changed before, so this is a different. This is a different one, and I say it's the first one I've went to. And there it is. It's out. Clean up that board a bit so I can put a new one in. My bird is still making noise. That's a lot louder outside, by the way. I mean, I've, I'm, in, I'm inside the workshop here, and uh, the door's closed, and I have insulation in here, so it's that bird is actually quite annoying. Bald eagle. That's what it is. As I've said in posts, we have uh, literally hundreds of books, hundreds of them. America's bird my ass. Yeah, that's definitely bad. It's uh, We have hundreds of bald eagles here in this area. It should be Canada's national bird, not the stupid goose. Because the numbers of them that we have here is just... It's quite amazing. We have... Um, there's a lot of farmland around here. Not where I am, but in the outlying areas around me. And uh, there's a lot of food for them. There's a lot of rabbits, there's a lot of rats, mice, <clears throat> they got the ocean, they got fish. Now we got a garbage dump and uh, a composting facility about, I guess about 10 kilometers away or so, 10, 10, 10 uh, about 10 kilometers away, next town over. And uh, that gives them a tremendous food source throughout the winter so they don't leave, they stay here year round and say we have uh, we have hundreds of them. There's been times when I've been driving out the freeway and I wish I had a camera with me with a good lens because it's like a tree and it's just full. There's a, there was a tree that it, it must have had 150 um, eagles, I kid you not, sitting in it. It was just ridiculous. But um, they are a problem for people because they have snatched small dogs from people and cats. So um, they uh, can be a bit of a pest if you're... You know, it might be nice to look at, but when it takes your cat or dog and eats it, then people aren't too happy with them. We find another cap and we'll see whether that fixes this one, and I bet it does. This one's getting a brand new cap. I got lots of these small ones. Actually, I got quite a few caps of all different sizes now because I stocked up on some of them. The last time I fixed these things, I just used recycled uh, caps out of whatever whatever old power supply I had kicking around. Thumbs down in three, two, one.
I do that just to piss off the haters. I actually do have side cutters. I got many pairs of side cutters. But I like my good old snips, my good old Klein scissors because they do a nice clean job on here. The way I look at it is that those out there that hate me using my electrician scissors to snip components the only reason they hate them is because they've never used them. If they actually used a set, they probably wouldn't be bitching about them because uh, they have a superior cut to most other things I've ever used. Okay, let's power this thing up and uh, see if it blinks its power light like the up was doing before. So remember it was blinking the power light? Well, no more blinky light. And when I press the power, it turns green because it's now turned on. Let's uh, see if this one fares any better than the other one as far as receiving from that indoor antenna. Maybe those other caps are bad. The menu's not coming up on this one. I know they take a few seconds to boot, but... Okay, no signal. Auto scan. Now they say this is the uh, this is the bad antenna. So I don't. I'm not thinking this is going to pull in anything, but we'll see. Maybe the other tuner isn't quite as sensitive, but we'll see if this one pulls in any channels. Uh, if it doesn't, then I'll go and hook it up to the big antenna. And we'll do a scan on it and see if this one's working. And then I'll have two of the three fixed. Already this one's showing more promise than the other one because the other one got no channels on this little antenna hanging on the wall and this one has found six so far. So I think the tuner in this one may be a little more sensitive. We'll let it go through the rest of the scan and see if it pulls any more in. As you can see it's found 11 so far with an antenna that got nothing on the other box. Well there it's finished the scan. I'm actually getting a picture off this one. Yeah, lots of shopping channels. Channels that everybody wants, right? Like three shopping channels. I'm going to take this one in and hook it up to the bigger antenna and we'll do a scan and see how well this one works. So I've got it on the big antenna now. We'll see what uh, channels it finds on the big antenna. It should uh, find more than the... there it is. Oh boy! Is it ever! It's getting channel 28 KBTC NHK World Service. This is getting a lot more than the other one and it hasn't even finished scanning. I'm only like halfway through and it's got nine channels already. There's ten. So obviously the tuner in this one is a little more sensitive than the tuner in the other one. Here we go. Now we got 16 channels found. We'll see how many this one finds in total. I should be showing the picture on my other Always. on my other screen because it's a lot clearer than this plasma. This plasma, uh, it, 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 the picture's not as clear on channel 7. My other TV, the CRT set, is crystal clear. Even this little black and white set is crystal clear. But it looks like it's going to find 17 channels. So clearly this box is uh, working a little better than the other one. Now that 
that is pretty amazing. This is a KBTC. I've got my picture enlarged on the screen here. I have, I've got to adjust the aspect ratio. This is KBTC. I'll put it on my other TV. There it is on my CRT set with the severe burn in. Uh, KBTC, now that's, a, that's a PBS station out of Seattle. And I don't get that on my uh, regular TV because my televisions all have an are on an antenna facing north to pull to pull in the Vancouver stations. This one's on an antenna, but it's it's just an omnidirectional antenna on the other side of the house, no reflector or anything. So this kind of picks up signals from every direction. But the other box didn't see these channels, and this one does. So two identical boxes, and one the tuner is much more sensitive than the other. This is probably the one that I'm going to put into service because I can add some stations or add a station to my uh, network my analog feed that I don't get anywhere else and maybe the NHK world service might be one that I might put on that's a news service out of NHK out of Japan I might put that one on here we go the NHK news NHK world service transmitted on channel 28.2 and there's also a 28.3 but that's uh, coming off that one. Uh, and I apologize that I had to put distort the screen when I was talking before, but I didn't want to uh, get hit with, even though it was PBS, I didn't know what they were broadcasting, whether I would get a copyright match for shooting the screen. So while I was talking on that last segment, I was messing with the screen so that I wouldn't uh, get picked on. So you see the screen flipping upside down and, and inverting back and forth every you know, six or seven seconds. That's the reason I was doing it. I don't think I got to worry too much about this though, getting matched for copyright. But anyway, that's NHK World Service. So for those unaware, this NHK World Service is an English language um, broadcast from Tokyo. So it's kind of like a news channel and stuff. But uh, anyway, it's kind of an interesting one that uh, I might watch. Now that I've got this box working, I can put it on one of my, my spare modulators. I'm going to throw that third one up and see why it's not... Uh, picking anything up but I have a feeling the tuner is probably foobar on it I tell you there's nothing like watching a real black and white movie on a black and white TV it's great I definitely don't want to show this one for any length of time because that's an Elvis movie and you know that'll get me shut down pretty darn quick well that's it thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next part